So what we're going to look at in this session is, is design. But before I talk about design, I'm going to talk about the loading that I've got on this model. Now, in this model, the one that we built in the last session, we've only got two simple load cases, steel dead load and floor loading. In reality, I would have other loading such as wind on here. But for this presentation, I'm just keeping it simple. But what I do want to do is create some design combinations. So design, design combinations. Now I'm going to look at the EU 1990 buildings and I'm going to set the steel dead load as permanent and the floor loading as imposed. Next, I'm going to look at the fundamental combination. And for this example, I'm not going to create an envelope of the combinations. So there are my combinations that I've created. If I click on one of them, you'll see the factors that have been placed into the low cases. I'm going to save the model and I'm going to solve it. Once it's been solved, I can start to look at the results. So I'm going to look at contours of force moment FX, the axial load on these members. So there's the axial load that I'm seeing on the screen. Now that's for the floor loading. I'm going to set active this combination here because that should be the worst. So I'm now looking at the actual load for the combination. Now, rather than looking at actual load for a combination, I want to do some steel design on this. So to do that, I'm going to go to the design menu, steel frame, and I'm going to choose which design code I'm going to work with. So I'm going to work with EN 1993. And these are the default values that I'm going to work with today. Now, once I've done that, I can create some design attributes. So attributes, design, steel frame, now this is the EU steel design attributes. Now on the top left hand corner you set the grades of steel that you're working with. Top right hand corner the actual tension of 0.6 is a bit low. I'm going to set that as 0.8. And now I'm going to talk about the restraint. So this column here I'm going to assume is unrestrained. So I'm going to leave that as unrestrained and call this design column. And hit apply. Now the beam members, the beam members I'm assuming are being restrained by the concrete slab on their top flange. So top flange restrained and I'm going to call this design beam. Okay, so these two attributes now need to be put onto the model. The simplest way of doing this is go to the geometric section here, right hand mouse button, select assignments. That's picked all the columns. I'm going to drag on the column and I'm going to repeat that with the beam. So select assignments, say yes, and then drag on the beam design section. Okay, now I've done that, I can go to the layers and double click on my contours layer. And rather than just look at force and moment, I have the steel frame entity. I can choose that and then choose which of the design checks I want to look at. To start with, I'm going to look at compression. So if I okay that, Rather than looking at actual load, I will get a utilization on the compression check. And you can see the maximum utilization is 0.98. If I zoom in here, it's one of the lower columns down here that's going to have that maximum utilization. I'm going to select that line and I'm going to do a member report on that line. So what this will show me is the steel design calculation. So here you can see it's passed, it's passed up there. If I scroll down through, I can see all the calculations and what numbers are being done. Now here, if I scroll down through all the checks, you'll notice some of them are red. They failed. And that's because the compression utilization was so high that when we start to look at compression and bending, it's going to fail. So we know that's failed. Again, I can look at the calculations to see why it's failed. But in this case, I know that the section that I've used for the columns is quite light, so I need to make that a heavier section. However, before I change this section, what I'm going to do is change the contour I'm looking at. So contours. Now, rather than look at an individual check, I'm going to do the util max. This will show me the worst of all the checks, so I get a very good idea of which one's failing. I'm all going to set the maximum value to one. Therefore, anything that is shown is red, I know is failing one of the checks. So here you can see the maximum utilization I've got is 2.4, so lots of red. <coughs> so what I'm going to do now is increase the section size. So I'm going to go to my column and change to a 400M section. 
Now, I'm doing this without rerunning to start with because I can check to see how that affects the utilization. It's now below one. Once I've checked that it's sensible, if I want, I can rerun and get an accurate calculation on the forces and moments. So I'm just going to set active the combination. So there you can see it's very little difference in actually rerunning the calculations. Now, what we've tried to do today is just give you an idea of how this works. I'm just going to select this line again and do a member report again. Now these member reports, you can see everything's now passing. I can print them out or I can add them into the LUSAS report for further printing. Now in this session today, we've gone quite quickly. If you want to find out more information, what I'm looking at now is the detailed example that comes on the example kit. It has more loading, it talks about restraints in different directions, and it's a very good place to start to learn more detail about the frame designer that we haven't covered today.